Olá, meus amigos, aqui é o Diego Figueiredo. Gostaria de compartilhar com você um vídeo histórico que eu vou postar agora para vocês, junto do percussionista Gerardo Vélez, que tocou ao lado do Jimi Hendrix no Woodstock em 1969. Ele também já tocou comigo aqui nos Estados Unidos e é uma entrevista, um bate-papo maravilhoso. Não percam esse bate-papo que vai seguir agora aí. Uh, ele também contando, ele foi membro original do Spyro Jaira, tocou com Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, David Bowie, B.B. King. E ele vai contar um pouquinho disso tudo pra gente agora. Fiquem ligados, curtam esse vídeo. Pra quem não segue lá no Instagram, é, vai até lá também. Eu posto sempre coisas muito bacanas pra vocês. Então vamos lá. E perdoe aos amigos que não falam inglês, esse vídeo foi feito somente em inglês. Uh, mas vocês vão entender aí, para quem não fala inglês, um, um pouquinho disso. Tem muita, muitas fotos no vídeo, muita, uh, vocês vão captar a mensagem. I am here with my great friend Gerardo Vélez. He showed yes. me all the things he's done for this wonderful years. Yes. Show me this picture. Gerard. Okay, this is my band Spyro Gyra. Okay. We're the best selling contemporary jazz group of all time. For okay? sure. George Benson, Herbie Hancock. It's a beautiful picture. Yes. And the mayor of Atlanta who was the Secretary of State for the United States for many years. Oh, fantastic. That's one star. That's one. Yeah. Okay. What a lot of history. A lot of history here. Okay. Yeah. This. Yeah, let's see that. This right here it's is my beautiful. brothers, Carmen Rojas, yeah. Carlos Alama, who were with David Bowie for 13 years. Very nice. Those are my brothers. And I played with David Bowie on a few albums, but yeah. also in live shows. We played together. That's great. Yes. Beautiful. Look over here. This uh, is my uh, gold record yeah. with Spyro Gyra. Okay. Carnaval. 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 Yes, because we recorded it in Brasil. Ah, you recorded it oh, in Brazil. We had Cachaça. Ah, that's fantastic. Cachaça is one of our songs. That's great. Course. Cachaça, sure. you knock a couple of those guys. Exactly. So this is platinum. Okay. For Morning Dance, which is our biggest record. Wow. Okay. Spiral so Giants. millions of those. A couple millions of those. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then over here is the third album, Catching the Sun. Do that, do do. Do that, do do. Gold album. Very nice. So that was, here's the first. If you look at the artwork, Yeah. Artwork. Yeah, the artwork. There are the same artists. The same artists. That we did all, all three. Yeah. So it's all about Carnaval with a little winged nymph, you know, a, a, yeah. a beautiful, like, little fairy. And I she's in all the portraits in these three albums. Very nice. Right. This is 500,000 cops. Wow. Easy. It's a lot of... One million Easy. copies. Oh, this is platinum. That's platinum. It's a the million copies. But I have it's more. Fantastic. I have more platinum over here. Yeah. Is me working with Elton John. Wow, that's beautiful. This yeah. is me working with Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones. Yeah. And this guy it plays drums for uh, for Bob Dylan. Oh. Charlie, his name. Is, oh, I can't remember his last name. Forgive me. But Charlie is the bass player. I mean, the bass player or drummer. He's an excellent so musician. So from the 80s, maybe? Mm, 80s, 90s, 80s, 2000s. 90s. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. great. This is Jimmy yeah. Hendrix and Keith Richards. Keith Richards. Yeah. At Madison Square Garden. Okay. Okay. You were there too? Yes. That's gone? Wow. I was, hang I was hanging out, as they say. Very nice. This is Joan Baez, mm -hmm. who I worked with for five years. Oh, that's good. Joan Baez uh, is the queen of nonviolence. We went all over the world saying peace is the way to go. 
Um, music heals all wounds. So we went everywhere. We went to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Wherever oh, there was, yeah, yeah. Wherever there was war, there too, yeah. wherever there was war or conflict, mm. she wanted to go and I went with her. Oh, that's great. Because she was... So, uh, yeah, I am here with this great percussion, this great friend of uh, mine. I love playing with this man. This right guy's here. fantastic. This yeah. guy's. Now, if you look up there. Oh, was, look at that. Yeah, uh, that's my seven Grammy nomination. Wow. We never won, but we have 14. It's seven. It's, no, wow. 14. Wow. I only have seven up here. And because I'd I have, like to share this video with my friends. Please. All over the world. Yeah. Because this guy, he played with with many fantastic musicians, and he played with Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock. Yes, I did. So I'm oh, gonna show you that, yeah, that, yeah, that exactly. picture right go over there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. So this is Jimmy and wow, I Wow, look at, at Woodstock. that. That's fantastic. That's yep. brilliant. It was, hermano? 1969. 69. It was my birthday. Your and birthday? My, that day? That day. No, no. no. August 15th okay. is my birthday. That's when the festival started. Okay. It was my first professional gig. The first time someone actually wow. paid Your me. Your first professional gig. Is Woodstock. Oh, that's Woodstock me. with Jimi Hendrix. That's my first gig. Okay. Ooh, wow. Then I went on What to, a luck guy. Yeah, I've been very, very fortunate. How yeah. old you were? 20. 20 20. years old. Okay. Here. I'll bring this out so you can see him, Ronald. Oh, look at you here. And Jimmy that's Hendrix. A, that's here. a baby. Baby me. Wow. Baby me. Please. How was Jimmy? He was a wonderful guy. Quiet. He was retrospective. He would look at everything. I was a, I'm a big personality, so I would go out. I would get the girls, I would bring, I said, you want to meet my brother, Jimmy, we would jam all night long. It was just amazing. I miss him dearly, but uh, you know, all that has transpired since his death uh, only motivated me. And then uh, that band was the first fusion band that mixed Latin, jazz, funk, all of that together. I see. We were the first band. The Miles Davis did Bitches Brew. He was in the studio doing his electric Miles. We were playing out, out and creating, you know, trying to figure out the music. You know what I mean, Diego? Yes, yes, you yes, have to yes, get yes. out there and play it and go, I yes. don't know about that section. That section works. That section doesn't work. That's what we did. And uh, he taught me so much about being a musician. Before that, you know, I just played and jammed with people. You know, I wasn't professional like you or him. I was just a guy who just loved, I'm a dancer. I just loved it I all. He loved the way I played. So he told his manager, the manager says, who is this kid, Jerry Velez? Wow. Get rid of him. Jimmy said, no way. I love the way he plays. He makes me play better. So he's staying in the band. And that's when we added Juma. No, no offense to Juma. Juma's a great player. But he adds the African feel. I added a world beat, you know, you know what I'm saying? More mm -hmm. Brazilian <laughs> to him. And also Afro-Cuban, you know, as well as pop and rock, which is you know, my forte, you know? So that's what I brought to the table. Obviously, I was a baby. Jimmy was, you know, f almost five years older than me. So, you know, when you're 20 and someone's 25, they're older, you know, when you're a kid. Totally. But people say, what was it like being with Jimmy? I said, well, we looked at a girl and he pushed me out of the way. I would push him out of the way because we were buddies, you know. Sure. When you have a friend and you're playing and you talk about life and where you're going to go and all that, that's what we did together. That's and uh, you spent a lot, uh, how many years together? You know, not that long. Not that long, but, but it was Two enough. Years. Two years. Enough to do. When great you're things. 20 years old, you know, when you're 20, tell me I'm not wrong with this. Okay. You're going to be my best friend forever, man. You know, nothing's going to tear us apart. We're going to be best. Exactly. You know, 
top up. And then it we all happened. go in different directions in our life. It happened, yeah. That's the same thing that happened with, with he and I. It was like, uh, I knew everyone in, in New York. Whenever he came to New York, I knew the nightclubs, the venues, yeah. the girls, the music. I set up everything. I'd make sure there'd be amps, martial amps, whatever people needed, because I do production. I do Talk production right now because it's easy for me. Other other musicians go, I don't know what to exactly. do. I said, let me do it. So that was my relationship. That's fantastic. And that's my relationship now with Diego. Oh, thank with you. With Diego and thank I. Thank you. But not only me, but Diego. Friend. Diego is the future. Okay? <laughs> I am the present and the past. He's the present and the future. So I work with only the present and the future. Why? Because I, we've already done all this wow. stuff, man. So good. I gotta talk with this from guy. You. I gotta play with <laughs> this guy and other people, not just you. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure, sure. People at your level that stimulate me at this level of my life, where I did it with everybody. I played with Miles and Dizzy. All wow, those wonderful people. Tell some more people that okay. been be your work. BB King. That's fantastic. Miles Davis. Uh, Dizzy Gillespie. I did a lot with Dizzy. We did a lot of festivals together. That's George nice. Ween, all the uh, uh, Newport Jazz, all that was a man called George Ween. He was a keyboard player. George, at the end of every night, he would have a jam session where he would actually play. He was a major promoter, unbelievable guy. He brought jazz to the forefront. If it wasn't for George Ween, who knows what jazz would have been. George Ween was the guy. He was a keyboard player. He wasn't great, but he could hang. That's you know, he wasn't us, but he could hang. You know what I mean? He could play the chorus, and he had a couple of solos and stuff. A wonderful individual. And that's how I got to play with Dizzy and B.B. And King and Miles and, and Sarah Vaughn. And, and, oh, God. You jam with Janis Joplin, too. Well, that was another. That was, um, <laughs> that was not what this. Was this was all jazz. Oh, see, yeah. And I started yes, with yes. Jimi Hendrix. It was exactly. Janis. We would all hang out backstage. So, and Jeff yeah. Beck, who passed away recently, he and I were buddies. We didn't get along too great because he was kind It of, was so interesting. I'm here with my friend. So we met, actually, we met on the stage. On the stage? Because they told me, Diego, you play with a phenomenal percussionist. He lives in Sarasota. He'll come. So we met like one hour before the concert. Thank you. And it was like an instantaneous connection. So it was fantastic. And Let now <laughs> I am learning a lot about the things with yeah. Ger Gerard. So uh, it's, not only, it's not only that. This man right here, mm. not... Look, I've mm. done... I've been very blessed. I've been very fortunate. And now it's for the next generation of players. I, I, I do a lot of old school, new school. This gentleman here has more of a new school interpretation of his instrument. And that's what intrigues me. When I see Diego's understanding of his instrument, interpretation of his instrument, interpretation of the songs, I said, this kid, I call you a kid, excuse me. Sure. Okay, Talk because to you're me. exciting to me. Thank you so much. Anyone that's Talk cutting me. edge, I call him a kid. Why? Because I'm not a kid anymore. You're the, you're but the you have new. A, kid, a kid spirit. Oh, He has a great on. spirit. I have a kid spirit. We are right now hanging at... at My own. Yeah, so... Yeah, he's... Uh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Okay, no, 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 no. I want to say that uh, having played with many when, you know, Elton John, Michael Jackson, David Bowie, uh, Patti LaBelle, Wycliffe John, um, uh, Wu-Tung Clan, uh, Nelly, uh, uh, Janis Joplin, of course, Jim Morrison back in the day. Wow. All those... The old guys I played with, and then life moved on. And if you go to Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock, you'll hear three instrumental songs, which he never would play. Our band was a fusion band, 
of jazz, Latin, African, and rock. His rock was not just rock. It was psychedelic rock. We were dropping acid. We were, the psych we were experimenting. We were looking to see where our brain could go. If you use 10% of your brain, could you imagine using 50% of your brain? I would be a genius. You would be a genius. That's what we thought. We thought if we drop this, the world would become a different place. And thank you yes, for, for 10 telling minutes. this just beautiful. Thank you. About my music. I'm very oh. happy about that. Oh, when it comes to what you're doing, I see that, um, <laughs> you know, for me, having played with all these incredible artists all my life, I look more towards the musicians who are playing very stylistic but intricate and beautiful music at the same time. That's what gets me going. That's what got me going with Spyro Gyro. Spyro Gyro, we're the best instrumental band ever. Why? Because I listened to what he's playing. I listened to Diego and I said, hmm, okay, let me add this, let me add that. It's just so creative. It adds to my creativity. And I hope he agrees that I add to his totally. creativity. And it's not totally. really add to his creativity, but push him. I push him because he's the melodic player. If I am just going back, if I'm going back and he goes, exactly. All right, yeah. Exactly. That's going to make the music very special. And we want to be special. Totally. We don't want to be ordinary. Exactly. And you are special. Well, thank you, brother. You are special. So are you. Thank you so much for sharing your space with us, with me, your time, and telling about this wonderful story in music that you have. Thank you. You are keeping doing. We have a lot of things to do. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been on, you know. So, look at that. Yeah. The awards I have. It's beautiful. I have three awards. I really like this picture. Uh, actually, that picture you showed me, I'll go back to that picture because it's something that was your first paid gig. My first paid gig, gig. in 1969 at the Woodstock with Jimi Hendrix. Yes. First look at that. You played like the same way you played with him, you played with me. 21, man. I was 21. Exactly. I just turned 21. Fantastic. And, um, you know, Jimmy always carried uh, $10,000. Wow. Because don't forget, back then, there weren't any credit cards. No credit it, cards. It was barely checks. Barely everyone, checks, exactly. Everyone carried cash. Yes. And he had a, a thing here that he kept, you know, under his shirt. And he had $10,000 all the time. It's fantastic. And he paid me in 1969 $1,000 a week. Wow. What is that today? Wow. $10,000 $10, Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. So, you know, and I was, I was, I was partying. I, I was making a lot of money. That $1,000 was not what, what made, what motivated me. Wow. Mo what motivated me was playing with Jimmy playing with Rick Derringer, it's playing with, with with Jeff Beck, playing uh, with, it's uh, fantastic. Uh, with everyone. You know, I did Nile Rogers. I don't know if you know. Yes, Nile yes, Rogers. yes, yes. I met him at Montreux did you? Jazz Festival, I'd say 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Yeah. I, I worked with Nile for 40 years. I did all the David Bowie stuff. I did... Uh, um, White Noise, Black Tie. I also worked on Mick Jagger, David Bowie, you know, Dance to the Music it's and fantastic. all that stuff. Wow. I did the percussion for a lot of stuff with Nile. And then I was in the band, Nile Rogers and Chic. Oh, freak out. We are family and all that. I did that for 15 years with Nile. But I also worked with Umir Diodato. Oh, yes. From Basile. The, the, the music laureate from Brazil. That's very nice. Umir and I still work together. He lives in, in, he lives in Jacksonville, Florida. Nice. He's a dear brother of mine. He's got to meet Diego because his arrangements would, around yeah. Diego's playing, oh. would, I think, would be amazing. <laughs> 
Thank you. I'm in touch with him all the time. That's fantastic. Because he, the guy who works with him, Ken, uh, who is a brother to me, they're all oh, brothers. That's great. We work together with Diodato for almost 20 years. That's so fantastic. when he goes on tour, we work with, with symphonies and huge orchestras, 80 piece orchestras. And I'm in the so middle. Wonderful. It's the best place for me to be able. Because with, with Umir, it's like, you, Gerardo, you are my instrument. So you go out and you dance and you do your thing. And that guy, we were all like, he was the composer, wow. arranger. That's Umir Diodato. And we were his instruments. And he allowed me to dance, to get the people going, because that's what I brought to the table. Sure. And he utilized me to the best. So I still work with Mia Duodato, the poet laureate from your beautiful country. And I really appreciate, thank you, my friends. Thank you for seeing this video with this great guy, Gerardo Vélez, my thank friend. You, we play together soon. Thank you, brother. Very thank soon. you for sharing your yes. experience with us. Absolutely, man.